there's one thing that probably all of us have experienced. It's the pain of somebody being unfaithful to us. Whether that's a friendship or whether that's a spouse, we've all experienced that pain. And yet, when we look at our own lives, I'm sure that there's times if we analyze it, we'll see that we've let people down as well. And even more importantly, there's times where we've definitely been unfaithful to God who has been very faithful to us. So today on Daily Renewal, we're going to be talking about how to develop faithfulness. Hello everybody, this is Pastor Lyle and welcome to Daily Renewal. We're going to be continuing our series today on the abundant life and in particular, we're going to be look at how, looking at how to develop faithfulness in our lives. Now, if you're anything like me, you've experienced those kind of friends where, you know what, you never hear from them for a long time, and all of a sudden, when they do get a hold of you, whenever they get a hold of you, it seems like it's only because they want something. And, you know, I, I think a lot of times we get annoyed by people like that. We really question uh, where they're at, uh, where is their faithfulness. If you're anything like me, you do desire to be a faithful friend to those that you're friends with. But often we are let down because other people aren't as faithful as what we try to be. But on the other hand, I also say that there's times where I thought I was a faithful friend where I come to realize that maybe I wasn't as faithful as I thought. And in more particular, um, in my walk with God, I find that he's very faithful and there's times where I fail miserably. So that brings me to the question. Um, what does God really want from us? What is, what is my motive for even serving God? Am I doing it like that friend who the only reason I serve God is because I can get things, I can benefit? And you know, when I was a new believer, um, uh, and a, a lot of this is, is like uh, when a, a newborn baby, when a baby's born, they're very dependent. They're dependent on their parents for everything. And uh, as a new Christian, that's often how that is. You're, we're just, you know, we're there and we look to God because we have needs and he's the only one that can, can provide them. Well, really, he is the only one that really can provide our needs still. But God has a deeper thing that he wants to do in our lives than just uh, give us handouts and, and provide for us. And we see this um, in Je the book of Jeremiah we'll start with today. Um, in Jeremiah 9, Starting in verse 23, it says this. It says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. So we see here that God's desire for us isn't that we have riches and I have all this stuff. His desire is us. He wants us to know him. And, and when we look back at, at even the early portions of the Bible, you know, Adam walked in the garden in the cool of the day and God would meet him there. We, this idea of meeting with us, this idea of, of being with us, this was God's idea for man in, in, the, in the beginning. He created man in his own image so that he could have fellowship with somebody. He's no different than us. He desires to be loved. He desires to have communication. Uh, he desires faithfulness. Uh, so in, in saying that, Today, I want to go through some things that we can look at that are going to help us in cultivating faithfulness in our lives. So, let's start off by remembering that faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. And when you look at natural fruit, fruit grows on trees. And as much as man can do things to help trees grow, they can help for the, the uh, growth of a tree, uh, all these things, yeah, he can assist to a degree, but ultimately it's God who brings the growth. So for us, we can play a role in seeing faithfulness developed, but ultimately it's something that God is developing in us. So having said that, I'm going to look at five things 
that we can take a look at in our own lives to, to, number one, decide how faithful we are or see how faithful we're not. But secondly, to look at and, and use as a prayer request to say, Lord, I need these areas developed in my life because I want to be more faithful. Why? Because we want to know him well. We want to please him. And uh, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then as you, you continue to mature in your walk with God, that will be your desire, is to please Him. So, the first one we want to look at, we see in Luke 16, 10. It says, He who is faithful in what is least, or faithful in the little things, is faithful also in much. So the first thing that we have to understand, that there is no little thing in regards to faithfulness. If we make a commitment to something, if we say we're going to do something, it's vital that even if we think it's a little thing, we need to take it as a big deal. Any area of, of our life that we see that there's an unfaithfulness in, that there should be a faithfulness, we need to make the decision to stop what we're doing and make it a priority. And so this will be the first thing, is looking at the little things. And it says that if we are faithful in the little things, then we can easily see that that helps us in being faithful to the big things. The second thing that we'll look at is, uh, we see this in Ephesians 6, 4. It says, And you fathers don't provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. This is an example of how to treat your family. The second thing that we have to understand that if we're going to be faithful, we have to look at the ones that are closest to us and are we being faithful to them? This one in particular talks about on how to bring up a child. Now, if we look at this idea of provoking in the New Testament, it says provoke, uh, don't provoke your children to wrath. Well, that word provoke, if you look at it in the Greek, and I'm going to try to pronounce it, it's pronounced Par orgaizo, and what that means is to anger or enrage. Now, for all of us, as we grow up, our kid, uh, train our kids up in the in the ways of the Lord. Uh, it, what this is saying is that's a good thing to do, but we have to be very careful that as we train them up, we don't train them up in such a way that they become angry or enraged. Uh, some of the ways that we that that, uh, that people do grow up their kids, that's how they grow up, and so we want to be very careful. In, in, in the faithfulness we show our children, that we don't instill this into them. And with kids, it's funny because uh, in, in our attempt to be faithful, I saw in, an interesting Facebook meme today that summed it up. It went something like this. It says, you know what? You can tell your kids or try to teach your kids to say please and thank you a million times and they don't get it. But if you say one bad word, they will repeat it continually. And isn't that sometimes the case? The idea of being faithful to a family member or in a family setting, it takes work. But it's something that is very important. And we need to take short accounts. And there's a time maybe that, that you're shown unfaithful before your kids. It's very important that you deal with things properly because you that faithfulness will pay off. Again, looking back to doing the little things right, if you do the little things right with your kids, then it will have dividends later on. You'll often, I, I think, that we use the excuse, I've heard uh, in parenting, the, the, uh, the phrase, do as I say, not as I do. That's a terrible illustration to use in parenting. It should be, do as I say, and if I, and if I don't do as I say, then I'm going to show you how to handle your mistakes. You know, I, I, I remember... Uh, my dad, you know, years ago, uh, there was one time in my life where I, not one, not one time in my life I was a bad kid. I, I'll go beyond that. But there was one time in my life where uh, my dad didn't believe me. I told him the truth about something and he didn't believe me. And I remember after he found out that he was wrong, he actually brought me into my bedroom, sat me down on my bed, looked me straight in the eyes and apologized to me and said uh, he understood that he was wrong in, how, and in disciplining me. And you know what? I can only remember him being wrong once about that kind of stuff because I did get in trouble. But I remember to this day him correcting his wrong because he was faithful to being a good parent and showing me as a child the right way to do it.
And there's many illustrations that I can learn from my dad on how I'm doing the right thing. But that one really stuck with me, how to handle when you make a mistake. So the next one I want to talk about is being faithful on your job. This, for some people, might be a little thing. It might be a big thing, but it's a big thing to God, and therefore it should be a big thing to us. So in Luke 16, 12, it says this. It says, And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? So the idea of how you treat your job, uh, you know, sometimes I think we just kind of think of it as, uh, you know, it's my the thing that I do just to make money so I can so I can do all the things that, that I want to do. And if you're a believer, often we look at it as, yeah, well, my job is what I do so that I can get money so I can put it in the church or do missions. But you see, what we really don't understand often is that our job, you know, all the time that we have that we are on the planet, our 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 goal, or our, the God, the goal that God has for us, is bring is to preach the gospel to every create, creature, and our jobs are often a mission field. Now, there's times where you can't express yourself openly about your faith, but I will say this: you will express yourself openly about your faith, not necessarily with your mouth, but how you handle your job. You know, it's a very important that as a believer. We treat our job as if we're working for God because really you are working as unto the Lord with the job that you're at, even if it's temporary or for sure if it's long term. The people at your workplace need to see Jesus. And in fact, I've heard it said once that at your workplace, you may be the only version of Jesus some people uh, there will ever see. So how we walk before the Lord at our job is a big deal. It's also a big deal because of the fact that how you do that can, can potentially bring you promotion in other areas. Oh, I can't stand my job. I've heard lots of people say that. Well, you know what? God knows what job you're at. He's the one that allowed you to get the job you have. You ever think that maybe if you handled your job a little bit better, that God had, in an instant could promote you in that company or even promote you to another job that's, that's even better for you that you enjoy more? But how you handle your job while you're there is important. Now, the next one I want to talk about is always controversial, especially coming from a pastor. No, I'm not going to take up an offering when I'm done, but my question for you is, are you faithful with your money? You know, there's lots of scriptural principles that people can argue and, and, and you know, I don't know if tithing is New Testament or, uh, you know, I myself, I'm a tither. I believe in it. I've seen absolute uh, amazing things happen as a result of what I believe are uh, principles of giving in the New Testament. But that being the case, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, that would argue that. You can argue it all you want, but it comes down to this. Are you being faithful with your money? Uh, you know, when it when we look at the New Testament, I'll give you an example of Jesus. Uh, and Jesus in uh, Luke 8, it says this in verse 1. It says, Now it came to pass afterward that he, Jesus, went through every city and village, preaching and bringing glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom... Uh, had come seven demons, and Joanna, and uh, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him with their substance. Now, I want to submit this to you. Yeah, we see the time that Jesus told Peter to go out, go down and, and, and catch a fish and reach into the fish's mouth and pull out a coin and pay taxes with it. But there's no indication that that's how Jesus dealt with things. He didn't just ha need a finance whenever he needed a financial miracle, he would just, you know, <laughs> just wave his hand and all of a sudden money's there. No, he actually had people that understood that had benefit from his ministry and and as a result, they saw the importance of donating finances to the work of Jesus. It's right there in chapter 8. So for us, when we look at finances, the first question I would have is, how important is the gospel to you? And if you consider it important, we have to understand also that your finances or our finances play a major role in seeing the gospel preached. But I would encourage you to take a look at your finances and ask yourself, 
Am I really being faithful with the 100% of the money that God has given me on this planet to use? Do I use more, more money for the movies that I watch, for the, the songs I pay for on iTunes, for the, for, the, for the restaurants I go out to? How faithful are you being in regards to seeing the gospel preached, in regards to seeing ministry go forth, to see lives actually transformed? Your finances play a role in that. Are you being faithful with your finances? And the last one that I want to touch on today is being faithful in your awareness of God. In Matthew 8, uh, 28, 20, as an example, it says, And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And this is Jesus talking. Jesus said he will be with you always. He doesn't take time off. He's with us. His presence is here right now as you're watching this video. And, and that being the case, I'm reminded often that, you know what, we can get sidetracked doing things. I know you can get busy on your job, busy even doing ministry things. I know pastors, and I've been a pastor even, they get so busy with ministry that it's almost like it crowds out your time with God. The most important reason, the most important thing you can do while you're on this planet is to spend time with Him. When we don't spend time with Him, we're not doing what we were created to do. And ultimately, if we want to see anything developed in our life, it comes as we spend time in His presence. And I, and I, 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 I just want to say to you, even right now, spend the time and just thank Him. Acknowledge His presence. When you start acknowledging His presence, then that's when begin, things begin to tra be transformed in your life. And so I often, whenever I think about Jesus, I just am reminded that he's with me always. He's with me right now. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you for, for speaking to us. Thank you that you're bringing transformation. He's with us always. Just acknowledge him. Speak to him. Have conversation with him. And that's probably the most important out of all these points. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. I just want to uh, encourage you that it does help us when you subscribe to our channel and press like on our videos and uh, also like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, share these videos with as many people as you think will get something out of them. Uh, ultimately, we, we want to share them with as much as we can. Uh, so having said that, when you're if you're in the Kamloops area, drop by River City Church. We'd love to have you. So God bless you and have a great day.